Good morning, everyone. Thank you so much for being here, for engaging and learning and networking and celebrating this year's 25th anniversary of Family Cafe. This, yeah, absolutely. This event is another example of how Florida is leading the way for hosting an event like this, not only in the, the country, but worldwide. Yesterday, I heard there were individuals and families in attendance from London, from Canada, and other places around the globe to hear about this incredible event and to take it back as a blueprint of something to replicate. The energy and excitement and the atmosphere that is created by everybody coming together over the last few days has filled my cup, and I hope it has filled yours as well. I am Taylor Hatch. I should have probably started with that. And I have the honor of serving as the director for the Agency for Persons with Disabilities. I am so appreciative of the governor for the trust that he has placed in me to serve what I believe to be such a sacred population of Floridians. To provide a little bit more about my personal background, I'm a happily married mama of three. I have three kiddos, ages six, two, and 11 months. And I grew up in a small rural county in North Florida. Professionally, I began my career in the private sector, working within government affairs, which reinforced a vital core basis for the importance of stakeholder engagement, partnership development, and advocacy. During my time in state government, I've served in the policy areas of general government, workforce development, and health and human services. I'm so appreciative of my background because it brings together the experience of navigating government, which is sometimes hard to do, along with the importance of championing workforce development, employment, and lifting up education opportunities and colliding that with all things health and human services. During our time together today, you're gonna to hear from multiple team members and partners. You're gonna hear about APD's renewed mission and vision for our agency, exciting accomplishments and initiatives that are on the horizon, as well as hear from some of our fabulous partners who are doing amazing work to ensure that we have a robust system of care for the people that we serve. Since my time at APD, and in particular the last couple of days, I have thoroughly enjoyed getting to meet with so many wonderful people, many of you that are here in the room, and hearing about what has brought you to Family Cafe. Some of you are veteran participants and are familiar with the system of care, and some of you guys are here for the very first time, and you're new to the system of care. To provide a little bit of a brief overview, for those that are less familiar with our agency and our network of supports, the Agency for Persons with Disabilities, or APD for short, uh, serves more than 60,000 individuals with developmental disabilities. We offer a variety of social, therapeutic, medical, and behavioral services to support individuals and their families based on their individual need, of which none would be possible to provide without a strong network. The power of partnership is the underlying current to create, to maintain, and to build a robust system of care. There are countless partners within our network, some of which are here today, and some have yet to be forged. So let's talk a little bit more about APD's mission and our vision. Simply stated, our mission statement describes we are supporting individuals with unique abilities and their families in living, learning, and working within their communities by developing and creating multiple pathways to possibilities. To deliver on this call to action, APD is focused on three key areas. Some of you heard a little bit about this last night, but I don't think we can share it enough. First, APD is focusing on uniting around a culture that embodies and displays a true servant's heart, as well as ensuring that we possess and that we demonstrate an ambition of constant pursuit at every single opportunity, which translates to how we show up during interactions with self-advocates, with families, with providers, with community partners, and every other stakeholder. The second key area is the drive for all of our passions and the centerpiece of why we are here today. It is enriching the experience for the individuals and the families that we serve. Together, again, through the power of partnership, we will move the system of care forward by deepening our relationships with one another, specifically with existing stakeholders who are absolutely invaluable in lifting up the tremendous work that they are already doing to share with others. 
while also activating additional innovative connections with sister agencies, with not-for-profits, with faith-based faith -based organizations, and private sector partners. In serving in this role for just over four months, we have heard from countless self-advocates, mamas and daddies and caregivers, who have voiced the need for overlaid resources to serve individuals with dynamic needs and goals at the earliest moment possible. As such, APD is actively working to create multiple proactive pathways to offer a wide array of supports based on an individual's unique needs and future possibilities while wrapping services around their family as a whole. For APD, we will focus on acting as a facilitator or the connector of dots to create a seamless network of supports to promote and empower the people that we serve. The third and final key area is a focus on transparency and accountability. Simply put, we're gonna to commit to not only being accountable to one another, but also ensuring we hold accountable the entire system of care to deliver excellent quality experiences for the important and valued population that APD has the honor of serving. Asking ourselves, would the services being provided be good enough for our own loved one? Having shared the mission and vision, I hope you picked up on the common theme. The people we serve are far too important and the work is too great to not row in the same direction. Enriching the experience for individuals and families we serve is where the rubber meets the road. It's strategies like demystifying and streamlining access to traditional services, as well as going outside of standard models to lift up and make tangible circles of support that may be new or that may exist within pockets of the state, but not comprehensively. A couple weekends ago, APD had the honor of being invited by the governor's faith and community-based office to volunteer at an amazing event with the Miracle League of Volusia County. During the event, I remember standing on the field with Chad, one of the athletes I was partnered with and thinking, this is what it's all about. Using sports as a convener, an amazing not-for-profit, a passionate local church body, and the state to come together for the opportunity to serve and celebrate a tremendous group of athletes. The experience that I had the honor of sharing with that athlete cheering them on as they hit the ball or maybe dancing a little bit together during their walk-up song and witnessing their family members and their friends in the stands smile with such pride and excitement is what community is all about. Whether it's in a ball field as a volunteer in New Smyrna, cheering on Special Olympics of Florida athletes at an equestrian competition in Ocala with First Lady Casey DeSantis, or serving alongside the governor and the first lady as they opened their doors at the governor's mansion in Tallahassee to create a memorable space and experience for ladies to get ready for night to shine. It all equals one thing, strong communities, strong Floridians. I would like to now invite a couple special guests up to the stage to share about what they are doing in their local areas that demonstrates the importance of strong circles of support. So ladies, I am so thrilled to be with you both. You are doing wonderful, wonderful things within your respective organizations. You've also been a tremendous resource as leaders that represent entities that are closest to the work and the people that we serve. You've represented the voice of families and individuals to help shape vision, to help shape policy, and help work together on future investments for the system of care. I'm so appreciative of you both. So without further ado, we have two ladies that are here with us today in these chairs. We have first, we have Julie Price from Arca Broward. Julie wants to wave. And she is down in Southeast Florida. And we also have a dynamic leader, Violet Gonzalez from Sunrise. And Violet represents a provider with great, a great number of offerings and programs, and they are located statewide in every single region throughout the entire state. So Violet, let's start with you, my friend. Your energy is contagious. I love this about you. And what I love and so many others love about you is a tremendous example you are for when good people come together to solve a problem, you get things done, my friend. And so that is why you're here. I would love for you to share with the audience a little bit more about yourself, about your organization, and about how you identified a need 
brought people together to come together and, and have a solution to create a welcoming environment for families to enjoy a local festival in Tampa, Florida. Hi, everyone. Welcome to the Family Cafe. We are so glad that you made this decision to join us for a weekend of information and resources. We hope your first days have been filled with joy and opportunities. My name is Violet Gonzalez and I am the Director of Government Affairs for Sunrise Community. Sunrise Community is a nonprofit organization that serves individuals with intellectual and developmental disabilities throughout the state, from Florida City to Tallahassee. We provide all services, residential, intermediate care in our residential, also in group homes as well, supportive employment, supported living. We pretty much provide all services that are offered. We believe at Sunrise that the people we serve deserve the best that life has to offer so that they're able to reach their full potential. Do you want me to talk about a little bit about the you event? Want, you talk a little bit about the event. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so today, I'm excited to share with all of you a wonderful opportunity the organization received at the beginning of the year. We collaborated with the City of Tampa and Event Fest to create a sensory tent at the Children's Gasparilla Parade event. As I'm sure you all know, attending large events such as the one we're at right now can be fun, but it also can be pretty overwhelming, especially for some of our friends with disabilities. Regardless of the disability, everyone should be able to experience excitement and buzz with their friends and family. The city of Tampa recognized this and made the decision to take a few small steps to create an inclusive and welcoming event for all. So we created a sensory tent. To create a sensory friendly environment, we provided different types of com accommodations to soothe different needs. For instance, we had two types of earplugs. Some in individuals like to put things in there, some don't, and so we provided two different types so that they could have them either outside of the ear or inside of the ear um, to help address noise levels and sensory needs. We also provided mood lighting, like lava lamps, to help soothe and ease the attendees. Aside from the sensory toys and products, we also made sure to have activities like arts and crafts readily available. So many of the families who passed through the tent expressing their excitement and appreciation for a safe and quiet place to bring their loved ones to relax and reset while, be, while being able to enjoy the activities throughout the day. All right, that's so exciting. And she's not nearly finished yet. So Violet, why don't you share, you're so innovative and you just naturally bring people together and it's just such a skill. So what's next on the horizon for Sunrise? So because, because of the success of this event and the feedback that we received, we are excited to partner with the Agency for Persons with Disabilities to use this experience as a roadmap for other events in arenas, in stadiums, and throughout the, com the community. APD recognizes the impact that these small gestures can have for so many. And we look forward to helping people with disabilities enjoy, enjoy events in the community. Thank you, Violet. So if you could tell our first time attendees one thing to take away, what would it be? The, fir the first thing that I would say is welcome to the 25th Annual Family Cafe. 
we are so glad you are here. The, the next thing I would say is to soak it all in. Ask all the questions you can. You are in the perfect place to find all the support and information that you need. From providers to vendors, there's a wealth of resources here available to you. They are all here because they care and are passionate about the community and the people we serve. I want you to know that you are not alone. I appreciate that answer so very much. And let's do the flip side. So if you are a veteran attendee, what's the one takeaway you'd like to share? Well, thanks for coming back. <laughs> It's so nice to see so many familiar faces. I hope you found this year as exciting and beneficial at the, as those from the past years. As you can see, it keeps getting bigger and better each year. Please continue to connect with as many exhibitors as possible. Remember, we are all in this together. Again, I thank you for coming we would love to connect with you and be a resource for you and your loved ones. I'll see you soon. I'll see you at booth number 36, Sunrise Community. And all I can say again, you are not alone. And may God bless each and every one of you. All right, I told you she was good, right? That Violet, thank you so much. We appreciate you. I am also incredibly excited to hear from our next guest, Ms. Julie Price. She's from Ark of Broward. And what I love about Julie and her dynamic team is how very innovative that they are. Every time we visit together, it's incredible. I'm blown away by the ingenuity, the proactiveness, and their ability to execute. Julie, please introduce yourself and share a little bit more about your organization and talk to us a bit more about how you guys braid together multiple funding streams. You braid together local, state, and private funding streams to make sure you guys have the ability to be flexible, agile, and cutting edge to meet needs of today as well as tomorrow and what you're doing to partner with local organizations uh, to deliver diverse employment opportunities. Thank you so much. Uh, Director, thank you for having us here. Thank you for leading the Agency for Persons with Disabilities. Your vision, your excitement, your energy, uh, your charisma is, is, is admirable, and, and we're excited to have you leading an organization that does the best work in, in this state, and, and so thank you very much. Uh, so I represent Ark Broward. We are an organization that has provided services in our local community for 67 years. We're currently serving and supporting 1,200 children, adults, and their families on an annual basis in 21 diverse programs, cutting edge programs, as the director mentioned, and we like to, to say ourselves. Um, and we have engaged in a variety of activities strategically with our lo local community. So, Director, I appreciate that you talk about community. Community is everywhere. We are part of it, and there are many different types of communities. In Broward County, while well, Broward is large and Broward has lots of work to do still, Broward in many, many ways, I believe, is a model community for individuals who we are supporting. Um, through our strategic planning efforts and through listening to individuals who are we are supporting, we have supported whether they are our little babies all the way up through our seniors. One of the things that we learned uh, many, many years ago is that we needed to do some different things in terms of employment supports and educational opportunities. So we really spent quite a bit of time and we've created some programs that we consider to be unique uh, and provide opportunities for folks right away to be able to get out into the workforce. So one of the first things we did is we created some short-term rapid credentialing programs in the areas of culinary arts animal care and material ha handling, which is um, supporting folks to, to get employment in retail, light industrial, warehouse settings. So again, these are short-term programs 
12 to 15 weeks, and they provide individuals with the opportunity right away to be able to get in and do some hands-on instruction. So there's a classroom component, and then there's an externship or internship component in each of these programs. So for example, the animal care program, we partner with Abandoned Pet Rescue and with Broward County Animal Care. In our material handler program, we, we partner with a local electronics recycling business and AB7, which is a, a warehousing entity. And then in our culinary arts program, we partner with ourselves because we have a social enterprise called Art Culinary. If you've not been to Broward and you've not attended any of our events, we welcome you to be there. We have an 8,000 square foot um, culinary arts teaching center and event center, and we provide lots of opportunities for individuals, our students, chefs, and our student graduates to be able to work in our catering operation, which has now become a $2 million catering business in our community and generates a million meals a year with our partner organizations where we are in, we are in their kitchens at Broward Partnership for the Homeless, Women, women in Distress, House of Hope, Covenant House, and a handful of others, and we also provide all the grab-and-go items at the Museum of Discovery and Science um, Elements Cafe. So those are just a handful of small things that we've done. Um, we also have some transition programs. Yeah, let's give it up for catering, right? Um, we also have some transition programs that are that are unique because we have some some partnerships that some other communities don't have. So we have a, a transition program that's a, de, a deployment deferral program for individuals 18 to 22. That's in partnership with Broward Schools. So we're excited about that program. We have 24 students enrolled in the program, and right now, while they are enrolled in the program, 11 of these individuals and students who have such excitement and joy um, and a desire and a passion are already employed, and they're not even out of school yet. So that's a, a tremendous accomplishment. We have 15 employees. Yeah. 15 employer partners, uh, and we are, we are participating in work-based work -based learning activities every, every day with students. We also have a transition program funded through the Children's Services Council of Broward. If your community doesn't have a Children's Services Council or a Children's Trust, as parents, we've got to figure out a way to advocate to make that happen. The, 21 years ago now, Broward, Broward, the entire community worked hard to bring the community, the Children's Services Council to fruition. It is a taxing entity through, through real estate taxes, but what it does is it pumps in an additional $100 million into Broward County for children's services. And a good portion of that supports programs for children with special needs. And so one of the programs uh, that we operate is a transition program for after school where we put, we're a partner in several high schools and then there's a seven week paid internship. So, and the students are thrilled to death every summer to be able to, to get out there and, and work and, and earn a paycheck for seven weeks. So that's another one of our employment programs, that education programs that we feel is, um, is really top notch. So Thank there you go. You just have a couple things going on, right? Just a, just a little bit. A just forgot, yes. So thank you so much for that. Uh, Julie, what's incredible about the leadership that, that you possess and what you have going on at, at Arca Broward is your personal experience. You have served, I think the first time that we met, you shared with me the multiple different roles uh, that you have served in over the years, just seeing different lenses into the system of care. And I think what that has helped to be able to do is shape, shape a very dynamic experience your organization delivers. You are doing great things around recruitment and retention of our critical frontline team members. And so I would love for you to share with us some of the incredible things that you're doing around your apprenticeship model that you've implemented. Thank you, yeah. Um, so I started at Arc Broward actually 37 years ago. Um, as a direct support professional in our intermediate care facility, Bark Housing. And I will say without a doubt, and I, as, as uh, Director Hatch said, I have had the opportunity to work at Arc Broward for a tremendously long time doing a variety of things, but there's no job that I love more and that I miss more every day is, is that the role of a direct support professional. Um, we know as family members, you know, as providers, you know, uh, particularly as family members, you entrust your most precious individual and your family to another individual or individuals all day, teachers, companions, whoever, whoever therapists, whoever that may be. So there's nothing more that, that is important than the individual being the best individual that they can be. So at Art Briar, we have spent a lot of time over the years creating a culture 
a culture that speaks actually very much to, um, to you know, what Director um, Hatch mentioned in terms of the passion and the care that's, that's important for folks. So one of the things we did in partnership with uh, Florida ARF, which is a statewide association, is we, we worked at the statewide level to create an apprenticeship program for direct support professionals. So there's seven organizations throughout the state currently, and we implement a program called the, the Direct Support Professional Program DS Paths. So it's 120 hours of additional support training um, in advanced direct support care and activities. So that's above and beyond what direct support professionals are required to get through the Agency for Persons with Disabilities or provider organizations generally might. So we're working with, with our direct support professionals to, to teach them about community empowerment, advocacy, um, professional development and, and collaborative relationships in the community. And, and I will say that we've had, in the 15 years that we've been implementing the program, we've had about 180 graduates, direct support professionals, Probably have about 100 of them who are still employed with Arc Broward today. Some of them have gone on to other organizations. Some of them have gone on and, and progressed and become nurses and, and, um, and are working in the field elsewhere. But it is a game changer to be able to provide professional development opportunities for those who are the deepest and the closest and the most intimate with individuals with disabilities, both children and adults. Uh, and, and it's... Um, been an opportunity that we, we will continue to grow and grow throughout the state, and we, we know that the agency has interest in continuing to have those conversations and to see where that leads us. John F. Kennedy Jr. said, and I was on the board of the National Alliance for Direct Support Professionals, and, the, and he was a founding uh, member of that, and he said, quality is defined at the point of interaction between an individual with a disability and their direct support professional. And that is so true in every sense of the word, and it's programs like the DS PADS program that make sure that that, that happens, and so that you can sleep better at night, and so you know that you have partners in all of your, your experiences, and your circle of support is bigger than just you and your family, but there are individuals out there to, to love and support you. Thank you, Julie. And finally, Arca Broward is doing some pretty great things to support mamas and daddies and caregivers. I remember talking with you and Kim Vassar, that's a part of your team, and their story was so powerful about how they're just wrapping around those caregivers with a peer support model. And so could you share just a little bit about what you're doing there? Absolutely. So one of the things that I think is uh, really important about the, the conversation that or the, the comments that the director mentioned earlier is community. So we we actually our largest um, the largest group of individuals that we're supporting at Arc Broward are children. So we, we support over 500 children and their families. And so those are our, our babies in our preschool all the way up through uh, through young adults who are who are in our transition programs. But one program in particular that we operate is called the Parents as Teachers Program. And so that program is a national model that we brought down to Broward County. It's the only, it's the only, um, we're the only provider in the country that's operating the Parents as Teachers Program supporting families who have children with special needs. And uh, it's a program that provides opportunities for us to have parent educators who can, who go into the family home and work with the family unit, not just parents, but also siblings, grandparents, aunts and uncles, extended family, and, and other, other important people in their lives. So that's, we, we go in there and we work with them to be able to identify developmental milestones and help their sons and daughters reach those. But one of the other important components of that program is the peer, the peer mentoring model. So we're able to pair parents together. Sometimes that's parents of newly diagnosed children with parents who are a little, have kids that are a little bit older, and to be able to really help navigate and walk them through what the experience is going to be like when they're receiving early steps Part C services, they're transitioning to Part B, getting into the school system at three. That's a scary proposition for many folks. And then as they continue to transition into the, to the many opportunities and eventually into adulthood, making sure they're aware of APD and all the resources that exist. So that's a program that uh, we have operated now for 20 years, funded by the Children's Services Council. And something I'll just reinforce is that all of our children's services, so our preschool, our after school programs, our summer camp programs, occupational speech, physical therapy, respite care, and uh, our parents and teachers program, none of them can be done without the community, without the community of Broward County. So we brought together private funders and foundations, Broward County, United Way, Children's Services Council, School Board of Broward County, School Board of Broward County, 
for our county to be able to fund all these programs and braid together a, a, a stream of diverse revenue that helps keep the organization solvent, growing, and moving forward along the way. APD is not a funder of those programs, but APD is a partner and an important player in that. And children, it's important that, that families who have young children understand the role of APD. But as a community, we need to make sure that all of our communities rally together. It is not one particular entity's responsibility. It is the entire community's responsibility to make sure that we are supporting individuals. And Broward is a model in that way. So. Thank you so much, Julie. Thank you, Violet. Um, you are both just extraordinary examples of leaders that continue to challenge the status quo and by working with partners and others. I'm so appreciative of you both. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Violet made a plug for her booth, so I'm making a plug for mine. 205, yeah. <laughs> autism license plate, Art Broward, booth 205, come get Play-Doh and Bubbles, um, and enjoy your day. Thank you. Aren't they great? Please join me again in giving them a round of applause. My goodness, those ladies, you guys just, you just get it. And I appreciate that. From the moment that I had the honor of meeting you, just passion just pours out of you, right? And so the things that you're doing, we need to just shout from the rooftop. So I appreciate you. The significance of bringing those partners on stage to share their stories was twofold today. One, if you live in their local areas and you don't know them, you should introduce yourself and get connected because we all know you can have the greatest thing in the world going on, but if nobody knows about it, what good is it? That's why it's important that we continue to share and lift up the great work that is happening. And secondly, I would encourage others to use these stories as an inspiration and as an opportunity to replicate as a best practice. These are just two strong examples of best practices, best practices, but I know there are so many more. And if I haven't met you, please reach out. I would love to learn more about the tremendous things happening around Florida so that we as representatives of the state can act as a force multiplier for you. As you can tell, no one entity can do this alone. It is all about partnership. Partnership to serve individuals, with the navigation of supports at the earliest moment possible and to develop a plan together to ensure that others thrive. I would now like to introduce our Legislative Affairs Director, J.P. Bell, that will highlight some key areas from this past legislative session. Good morning, everybody. What an amazing weekend. I'm thrilled to share some of the exciting post-legislative session updates that work to move the needle in areas as Director Hatch has mentioned. As, we, as it relates to the budget, APD is set to receive $79.6 million to support an estimated 1,200 individuals in receiving appropriate services to both stabilize and achieve a state of thriving. Uh, 5.9 million, which equates to approximately a 10% rate increase for waiver support coordinators that provide service coordination for individuals enrolled on the iBudget Florida Home and Community Based Waiver. 3.4 million to provide education and training as well as critical subject matter expertise within the mobile response teaming models to provide on demand mental health crisis support to lessen trauma and bolster services. More than $530,000 to ensure transparency and accountability through the licensing and monitoring of adult day training providers. In addition to the funding, there was a legislative policy update, as the director stated. We are incredibly appreciative of our legislative partners, Representative Plakin, Senator Broder, and great support and advocacy from Representative Tant and many others. This new legislation aims to demystify the process for when an individual reaches out to seek assistance and invokes a call to action to create additional opportunities to provide assistance and support. It establishes opportunity to create greater visibility to share best practices and ensure service delivery exceeds expectations by braiding together critical resources as well as licensing and monitoring of a new provider group. I appreciate the chance. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.
I appreciate the chance to represent APD and the incredible individuals and families we serve, and thank you, Director Hatch, for the opportunity to provide an update on our legislative uh, session. Thank you, JP, for the update and for representing us all so very well during legislative session and all throughout the year. The agency and all of us here appreciate you so much. Thank you. Yes. Yeah. The wins that the system experienced this session are a direct result of the partnership that we have with the legislature and Governor DeSantis and his tireless efforts to lead to protect and to fight for the health, safety, and well-being of all Floridians. Whether you are new or a veteran attendee at the conference, if you're a self-advocate, a family member, a provider, or any other type of stakeholder, I hope you take at least one message away from our time together today. And that is the power of partnership to wrap around not just the individual we serve, but their family as a whole to create a dynamic support system in the pursuit of achieving a state of thriving. And that is what APD will be focused on. APD team members, if you could please stand up and wave so that people can see where you are. <laughs> and while you all remain standing, sorry, I did not give you instructions ahead of time. It's not helpful, not helpful. I'll improve next year. Uh, while you're all standing, APD team members, thank you so much for all that you do. I appreciate it during this conference and all year long. It is such an honor to be your leader. So everyone, thank you for your time today. I'd like to encourage you to visit APD's booth. I do not know the number. Do we? 700, 205, we're all one big team, right? Julie's is 205, so just make, get in your steps. That's right, that's right. I encourage you to visit all the booths at, in the exhibit hall. I was walking the booths earlier, and it felt like a pep rally. I was so just energized by the energy. And so these team members are standing because what we're going to do now is we're going to break, and they're going to remain here, as am I. And I would encourage you to come up to us, share your stories if you feel comfortable. If you have questions, ask those questions. And this is not a one-and-done event, right? So if you have questions and you think, if you're like me, I internalize like crazy, so I'll go home tonight, lay my head on the pillow, and I'll have a question like, dadgummit, I should have asked. It's not a one and done. Please continue to reach out to us. We get stronger because we work together. And so I really appreciate our time together. Thank you so much.